All right, morning writers. Hope you're having a good morning so far. We are back for episode three, Stories from My Street. I've really been loving reading some of your stories so far. It's been really good. Um, I'm interested to see that so many people have put real life stories um, just like uh, I did, or at least based on, like I based on mine. Um, but um, you, I just want to tell you just before we start, doesn't need to be in real life. So here are some top tips. Doesn't need to be in real life. Um, if you do want to do an in real life one, you could add a tightening tension that wasn't really there, but for more excitement. You can just make it up. Also called lying. Uh, the other thing I was going to tell you is, um, some people did this thing which is really interesting. Um, they recapped the previous episode at the start of the new episode, which I thought was really cool. So, um, let me do that for you now. Um, last time on stories from my street, Ben and Ben were up to shenanigans again. Whoa, I could make a good pun there. She Hannigans. Oh, amazing. Up to She Hannigans again. Um, just while I think of it, there was actually another Ben um, who our families knew who also wanted to be part. They wanted, He wanted to hang out with us, but he was really annoying. Um, and he wanted to say, hey, let's make a Ben club. And we said, no, 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 you can only join our Ben club if your last name rhymes with one of ours. My last name is Sheehan. His last name is Keenan. So Ben, Sheehan, Ben Keenan. Well, I see Sheehan and Keenan, they rhyme, kind of. But unfortunately for him, his last name was Harris. Sorry, Ben. I'm friends with him now. He's cool now. Up to shenanigans again. Um, what happened last time? Uh, oh, yeah, the BB gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The BB gun incident led to the unfortunate destruction of that BB gun. Ben one, B one, only escaped with his life narrowly from. Ben 2's, B2, mum, <laughs> because that guy came knocking on the gate after we'd shot him with a BB gun. And I realized if I gave myself a bit of feedback, I should probably have put some more sensors into the story the last time. So that's what I'm going to do now, which is why I'm writing it on here. So you can recap the previous episode at the start of the new episode. episode. See what trouble they get into today. Actually, it's just me today. Just Ben one. A prequel spin-off. Um, and that was it. They were my tips. Okay, let's see. So I'll start with the sizzling start right in the moment of action, and I'm going to add lots of sensors as well. This was it. I was done for. Nothing this bad had ever happened before. There was yelling, screaming, yapping, biting, tussling, which is a bit like wrestling, but it's a more interesting word. Tussling and one very unhappy dog. Um, I was frozen to the spot. Couldn't believe what was happening before my eyes. Uh, this is a little bit of backfill, but I'll just say um, backfill. I'll explain this later. My dog was snarling, um, jumping up, but leaping's more interesting. Leaping up, scratching and biting at the tiny, fluffy. Um, I need to explain this a bit of backfill as well, but basically it wasn't a street dog biting at the tiny, fluffy, pampered little dog 
in the person's arms. I couldn't rush in for fear of being bitten myself. I was only eight. Uh, what other senses did I have? So I was frozen to the spot. Um, I'll put this back in a little bit earlier. Okay. My vision widened from all the adrenaline pumping through my body. And my hearing amplified only to hear the frightful sounds. But all I could hear were the frightful sounds. I couldn't rush in for fear of being bitten myself. I was only eight years old. Okay. Um, that was actually the other tip I was going to tell you, your fives. You, you might already be doing this, but not heaps of people in my class were, so I'm going to say it to everyone. Use the sizzling start to preview what will happen without giving too much away. So I don't actually know what's really going on in my sizzling start besides the dogs, and there's another person there, and I am terrified of it. Okay. Uh, a little bit of backfill. This is another tip for some people. Make sure it's clear that you're going to your backfill. For example... How did it get to this? Or where, uh, let me start from the beginning. Something like that. Let me start from the beginning. My dog, Ebony, was a street dog. She came with the house we were renting from the same landlord, actually, who's wife's sunglasses I had denied stealing. Ebony had once bitten me on the belly! Bit me when other people were living in her house. In the house that she came with. That she belonged to. I already said came with. Um, um, she lived on a diet of white rice and slightly too old meat. But she was a street dog her whole life. She slept at our house but during the day, she roamed around doing street dog stuff. Eating rubbish, hanging out with other dogs, generally just being a dog on the street. Heaps of street dogs in Kathmandu. Um, if you're out too late at night, sometimes they chase you in a bit of a pack if you're running too fast or cycling. Um, so there we go. Um, this one particular day, there's my backfill done. I was out with Ebony, chillin' like a villain. <laughs> nah, don't say that. I was out with Ebony, seeing what was happening on our street. Um, so now we're getting into tightening tension where there are only a few events, but heaps of senses. So um, there are going to be a few events. You guys are going to um, read it a bit earlier than you would in the story because I'm planning it out now. But basically, um, Ebony sees this other dog. Ebony starts um, going for it, attacking it. And then I'll save my last event for the end. I've just decided. My back was turned. Short, sharp sent sentences for the tightening tension. My back was turned. I had no idea what was about to happen. 
I'll just change this to going on in our street. Um, maybe I'd get to hang out with Ben again. Hopefully this time our day would it end with smacking, also called spanking. As my mind drifted, my back was turned to Ebony. I had no idea what was about to happen. Um, so Ebony sees this other... Ebony sees... Another dog. That's what I'm working up to. So just details from here. And descriptions. My first... The first sign of trouble was the silence. Ebony had suddenly stopped um, moving. I held my breath. What had she seen? Then, starting from almost nothing, a deep rumbling growl started to, um, what's a good verb? Not like stream or um, grow or sh it needs to be like um, churn from her jaws. That's a bit more um, physical. Deep rumbling growl started to churn from her jaws. Um, I could feel her legs tensing, ready for action. Um, I started to feel nervous for myself. Was there a massive um, wild dog behind me. Um, barely breathing. I inched my body around to see what was um, about to happen. Um, to see what was about to happen. Then I knew Ebony had seen a tiny dog. This dog was brown, curly haired, and snobby. You could tell just by looking at it that it had had its every need taken care of for its whole life. Little brat. But it was an angry little brat. Its teeth were bared, lips pulled back all the way, ears flattened, against its head, um, looking as terrifying as it could possibly be. Ebony was stalking forward, head low to the ground, slow, whoops, slow deliberate steps, all the while constant rumbling growl, constant thunder of her growl. She was getting closer. I didn't have time to react. The dog was being held in someone's 
arms. Then I froze. I didn't have time to react. This was bad. The dog was being held in someone's arms. And my heart stopped. And Ebony was going straight for both of them. So this is my tightening tension year fives. I've tried to build it up as much as I can. Heaps of sensors and descriptions and details. Only up to the second event now, and then we'll do, um, then we'll do the final uh, reveal. Then she leapt in a flurry of claws and teeth and barking and yelping. Ebony was. Um, jumping up with fresh fury into this little dog and the owner. Again and again she jumped and barked and bit and scratched. The person was flailing, trying to protect the dog, kicking out with her feet and yelling for help. The tiny dog was trying to leap out of her arms, unbelievably. No scratches or bites had connected yet, but it was, it could happen any second. My mind raced. What was I to do? Ebony was as big as me, and she'd already bitten me once. Ooh, I gave you a preview in my backfill. Um, that that could happen. Gave you a bit of a hint. I called a foreshadow. She'd already bitten me once. I forced my mind to push my body forward. Step by trembling step step by step tem trembling step but the worst was yet to come as I picked up a bit of speed and got close enough to Ebony to pull on her collar I looked up and the world stopped spinning. Pulling, um, yanking Ebony back. I had seen my doom. Um, the little dog, tiny, fluffy thing was held. I kind of want to put this on separate lines for tension. <laughs> was held by someone I knew. Someone from school. The principal. This is a true story. Her arms in the time it had taken me to grab a hold of Ebony. My dog had managed to scratch into her arms. And as I looked closer, I saw um, a bite mark on the rump. That's the back, the butt, on the rump of her little spoodle. That's the dog. 
It's like a cross between a spaniel and a, and a poodle. I knew <laughs> this was going to be bad. Yelling an apology over my shoulder. My legs scrambled and slipped as I pulled with all my might on Ebony's collar and dragged her stiff-legged and growling in the opposite direction than she wanted to go. I shoved her through the gate, through our metal gate, and slammed it and slammed and locked it before she could do any more damage. What was I going to do? Um, the principal was called Mrs. Wilderspin, that's true, was going to kill me for sure. She always talked about, this is true as well, a hook in the assembly hall that she would use to hang naughty students by their pants. <laughs> by the back of their pants, all the way up there. Um, that was my reveal that it was the principal who was holding this little dog. She lived on the same street as me uh, back in Kathmandu. Um, and then just to finish this off, we need an exciting ending and I'm going to solve it with cleverness. Have I already said my mind raced? Yes, it, I did. Can't say that again. Um, thoughts were whirring through my head. Um, but my mind was blank. No idea I could come up with was going to save Ebony. Think, think. Look around. Oops, I'll put this in italics because it's what I'm thinking. Because um, I'm not saying it, so I can't put speech marks. What can you use? My brain screamed at me. At that second, my baby brother toddled around the corner of our house. He held a string in his hand, and I was momentarily distracted. He waddled around the house, he waddled around the front of the house, but the string kept appearing from the corner he'd come from. He'd um, gotten to the next corner of the house, and there was still string um, coming around, appearing, unraveling. Um, there was still more string. And at the end of it was his little toy truck. My brain sparked. I knew what to do. Um, scrambling into the house, I started chucking toys out of our toy chest digging furiously to um, find what I needed. 
the rope, clutching it safely to my chest. I sprinted back outside, grabbed Ebony and tied it to her collar. The other end I safely wound around a sturdy tree near the front door and knotted with the most massive knot an eight-year-old can make. My body crumpled with relief. Let's say I crumpled. I said my body too many times. I crumpled with relief. When the principal inevitably came around, we already had a solution. My parents could do the talking, but Ebony was, um, and Ebony was safe. A long rope for her to roam around our front garden. And access to all the rice and meat she could want. I'd never been in so much danger and I never want to be again until next week when Ben comes over. There you go, you five. That's my story. That is a true story. But you don't have to make yours in real life. It doesn't have to be true. Um, you can make it up, just like the SWAT cats and the Mr. Bean and the Saber Rider and the Star Sheriffs. But if you do want to do an in real life one, you can add a tightening tension for more excitement that you've just made up. You don't have to actually have something exciting to make it up and add it in. There we go. That is my episode three. That took me a little while. Half an hour, maybe? Okay, good listening, Year Fives. Hope you enjoyed that story. Um, I've got the sizzling start. Got the backfill. You don't actually have to put these in. This is just for you to see from me. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's my recap. Sizzling start. Backfill. Tightening tension. Exciting ending. There we go. So that's it, year five. Make sure you use those strategies. Start with a moment of action. Lots of senses in the sizzling start. Explain the situation and some of the characters. And then tightening tension, the big problem they have to overcome. Lots of senses, lots of descriptions and details, not many events. I only had three events in there. And then solving the problem in the exciting ending with cleverness, bravery, teamwork, or skill. There you go, your fives. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Good luck with your writing. Looking forward to seeing it. Bye.